You're listening to Sussex Roundtable, a weekly conversational podcast that provides an inclusive space for debate and discussion around university-related topics, hosted by your student digital media gurus at the University of Sussex. Hi guys, and welcome back to the Sussex Roundtable podcast. On this week's episode, we'll be talking about surviving quarantine. This podcast is hosted by your very own digital media gurus. I'm Piri. I'm a first year student doing media production at Sussex. And these are the rest of the digital media gurus who will also be helping me host this episode. Hi guys, I'm Emma. I am an English language and literature student and I'm in first year. Hi everyone, my name is Josh. I'm a second year global media and communications student. Hi everyone, my name is Ty. I'm in a second year of biomedical science. Today's episode, like we said, is about us as students trying to survive quarantine and just the ins and outs of what we've been trying to do to get on with our life while university life has disappeared for us. Yeah, so to kick things off, guys, how have things been adjusting for quarantine? Have you guys had to physically adjust your lives? Um, I would say so, in quite maybe a massive way. (laughs) I mean, obviously, (laughs) being a student, you're constantly surrounded by other students. Brighton is like a bustling international city. And whenever I've been out for like my weekly or biweekly food shop, you just don't really get that same atmosphere anymore. But it's because everybody's following government guidelines and staying at home. I would say that my life has changed in a sense that obviously we don't have like a physical uni to go to. So I'm not having to leave the house as much and I'm going a little bit stir crazy um, just being here. <laughs> Me, myself and I, because um, I'm the only like student left in my student house now as well. So I'm like trying to bear it out um, on my own. But I know that there's a lot of people that are, in, that are in much worse positions. And then also I'm just trying to keep my daily life as normal and as natural as possible. I'm trying to, not exactly being successful at the minute, but just trying to keep up um, a somewhat of a semi-structured daily routine to keep myself motivated. From myself, like, it's completely different from what I used to be, like, three three months ago, because now I'm back in my home country and everything is a lot different. Apart from, like, not living in the UK, um, I kind of, like, struggled a little bit at the beginning, but now it's, like, one month Um, after I come back here so I kind of like able to settle everything in one thing I find it's really hard for me to concentrate on to study is because I have to study in a very hot weather because the weather is really hot here I used to study in like a lecture theater with like warm weather like just like the cold weather in the UK but like now I'm like sweating while listening to the lectures. But Hi, is it like the summer in Thailand right now? Yeah, it, it's the summer in Thailand right now. But it's not like even the peak of the summer yet. It, it can get even hotter than this. <laughs> but yeah, kind of the same for me in that sense is that because I've had to come, I originally live in London and I've had to come back home and it's trying to like adjust my workspace with my family because I'm so used to having my own personal space but now having to share it with everyone that works from home now because both my sister, sisters and my little sister does A-levels um, and my sister and parents, my other sister and parents work from home. So it's been quite difficult for me to adjust to that setting and especially now with like deadlines coming up for uni, I'm so used to like keeping my head down and just going to the library and getting my work done, but I can't do that anymore. And it's trying to find like this new normal. I think that's what I've had to adjust I'm interested to. in yeah, hearing yeah. the perspectives of you guys who may be surrounded by more people or family and I don't mean <laughs> don't mean for this to sound like really sad but obviously oh, since I'm, I'm like oh <laughs> yes um but basically since I'm on my own I can kind of like beat my drum to I mean my own rhythm really so I can like get up when I want um if I'm in a bit of an antisocial mood or I feel like I really need to get work done to try and decrease the like the distractions I can always like switch my modem off so I don't have wi-fi and get some chores done some uni work done if it doesn't involve wi-fi I mean I say this <laughs> I've done that like once and then I like, got withdrawal <laughs> symptoms after like five minutes so it's not exactly like a successful thing but I'm just wondering how it is trying to operate your normal university schedule but back at home totally um for me because i never lived on campus always lived at home my family home um 
I think my parents hear of my schedule. I think when I got my timetable, I only had like 12 contacted out, like contact hours in the week. Mum was like, oh my God, you've got so much time off. You're going to love first year. You're going to just be chilling all the time. And now, well, yes, I have like one lecture for the day. But that's not all the work for the day. I have like reading, preparation, things to do after the lecture to prepare for the next one. And I think I've gained more respect, I think, as because I'm also first generation. So now my family have been to university before. Yes, so no one, same. Yeah, no one knew. Like when I was applying, when we were walking around, we were like, oh, this doesn't sound so new. Oh, look at this lecture theatre. This is so different. And now I think, yeah, I think I've gained more respect. So my mum's like, oh, my God, you actually do work. Which, because um, <laughs> I do it all at home and in my room, no one sees it. But because I guess we're forced on each other, I come downstairs and I'm like, guys, I've just planned such a good essay. All about, like, <laughs> and then I go on and on and on. They're like, okay, we don't actually care about the ins and outs of grammar, but that <laughs> sounds cool. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah I'm kind of the same because I do media production I'm literally always like editing or like doing work and like doing this podcast as well have like us sitting here doing the recording as well like it's us working so I'm constantly like on the ball even though I'm not at uni and my sisters are always like why are you constantly working like do you not have like time off and, like I feel like I'm making myself feel more stressful because if that if I don't have I feel like it's come from a levels like not having that stress makes me feel anxious so I need to constantly be like stressed to keep myself like doing work but other than that my term like the way that my days worked out during term time was that I would only have like classes on Mondays and Thursdays and Fridays so I'd have Wednesdays and Tuesdays off so it's been quite nice to have I guess more time but in the other sense it's like I kind of don't know what to do with my time anymore because quarantine has been quite long and it's like trying to find ways of being productive but then not being so restless as well trying to like fill the time in plans have changed in terms of like because me if any of you guys know me and Josh were both supposed to do the Brighton Marathon um well the 10k um in April but I sadly know, it we was so sad we but, were like structuring videos no. that was going to be released we were training together yeah. preparing all of the no, content <laughs> that was really sad because obviously that was going to happen on April 19th so I did have a mourned yeah. it a little bit <laughs> on the day because yeah. that was my commitment to living a healthier lifestyle and I feel like that flew out the window literally. the same week that it came in so oh, yeah <laughs> Yeah, that is interesting though because like what have you guys been doing to keep like physically well I think that's really important in quarantine I think my my schedule is completely messed up to to be honest like because I don't know like the reason behind this mess of my schedule <laughs> but I just feel like I, I'm more aware of all the work and the feeling of like okay I need to keep up with all the lectures all of my lectures have been like telling every time they send an email or send a, set up an announcement that like okay you have to revise just like in a normal times for the normal unseen exam everyone's been saying that for like multiple times that even increases the, str the stress on me like oh my god I need to like I can't let my guard down I can't be like too comfortable with this work from home thing <laughs> yeah that's the same with me I guess because deadlines are coming up yeah. it's kind of like I need to do get the work done at some point and I do want to kind of be work free I hope before the summer so because the last thing I want to do is come out of quarantine and still have more work to do and people look at me like what have you been doing it depends on who you are and what type of person you are though as well so I'm a twin yeah. but my twin sister yeah. is actually like we're kind of complete opposites we're like yin and yang so she's in first year at like the oh. University of Manchester doing zoology whereas I'm more creative doing media but basically once she found out that all of her deadlines were pushed back two weeks into the summer and that she wouldn't have any physical classes anymore, she got all of the work done within a week and now has all of this free time for herself. Wow. But with me, I suppose it's about overcoming your own obstacles as well. I kind of struggle with my motivation sometimes and find that I quite need that structure within my day to give myself a bit of kick up the ass to get myself to do it and whether that's making sure I catch the 50 bus at half eight in the morning to make it for my lecture or just following the same structured routine I feel like if I'm in a situation where there's a lot of distractions I'll be way too tempted so as much as I would love to be that person that's like yes I'm ready I'm on the ball I'll get all of my work done right now I think and I'm sure that many people can relate with this as well 
um, I've had to prioritize my own mental health and make sure that I'm okay and that my family and I despite being separated and stuff that we're all comfortable and safe and then once my mind is fully clear I feel like I can finally get on with all of my deadlines but I am really grateful that um from at least my personal perspective all of my tutors have been so accommodating in terms of just the whole schedule change and providing like personal support anyway um I've not had any online lectures like Emma or UPI seem to have but I have had like one on one zoom calls yeah and like personalized emails and that's been fantastic and I really appreciate the two week extended deadline for assignments too. I think I can only speak for like the MFM department but they've done pretty well in terms of like allowing it like us to be able to use the or the Adobe software at home because it's made us like be able to like continue with our projects because the facilities for them to allow us to use aren't available but I don't know about you guys in terms of your schools like how they've like helped to provide for you guys as well. This one is not like in top of my of my school, but um, I just found out like yesterday that like we can use the Acrobat Pro for free like during this quarantine time. So I was like excited. And I've been telling everyone in my family like, oh, I can use Acrobat Pro for free. <laughs> it's the Mom, simple look, things. Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as students, but yeah. I mean, like as an English student, like a lot of what we do is reading, so. Um, a lot, lo- loads of libraries <laughs> and archives have, but this is not just like for Sussex English students, but like for all students everywhere. There's been like loads of journals that have gone temporarily all access, and it's been really helpful in like finding crucial sources for your essays. So I've actually been enjoying googling stuff and actually getting access where normally I probably wouldn't be. It feels like almost I'm being given extra privilege during this time but I know it's not it's just to help us out but I just feel like oh this is so fancy normally you have to have a premium subscription to access this journal but now it's like oh check me out I'm just going to read something now that I never would have read before. So in terms of like going on then from speaking about the routines or lack thereof that we have (laughs) we're moving forward since we're not like attending a physical uni anymore um, since it's all unprecedented times and scary um what sort of things are people missing about sussex campus in itself i think for me because i like commute to uni i've actually really missed my commute i've missed the train journey because it was like 45 minutes in the morning where if i woke up really tired i could just chill for 45 minutes and just like completely zone out i could just look outside at like the moving greenery and just listen to a podcast or like wake up to like my playlist and it's just not the same doing it from my bedroom to like the kitchen. It's just I get I guess Emma, it's kind of like your sense of me time in the day because a lot of people say that you should have that like bit of like me time, which is kind of good, I guess. But for me, in terms of what I miss about campus, is just like literally walking around campus. Like you bump into mm-hmm. everyone and anyone that you see, and just walk into co-op mm-hmm. and like seeing your friends that might even work in co-op. Like <laughs> just just say the hello. Like it is great, and just grabbing a coffee or even going going. To the library is probably uh one of the things I miss just being able to study and like quiet and like for me in terms of studying I like to study in a place where everyone else is studying because it makes me less distracted whereas I know at home everyone else is doing something or they're like working but not seriously working so everyone's (laughs) just in like an unserious mindset have you um tried the uh, like online study with me videos that people do yeah. they literally record themselves studying and you can like join in yeah I've been thinking I did I tried that once and I think that it did work really well so I think I might continue that because it motivates me I guess in a weird like technological way someone else studying on the screen seems to make me want to study more it reminds me of the concept of like mukbangs yeah maybe i'm not oh. am i pronouncing that right pie probably yeah. not <laughs> no. but yeah i i maybe wouldn't follow like i wouldn't join like a, a study with me thing because i'd just be constantly aware of like <laughs> they're not actually there it's all a figment of my imagination but no i i relate to what you said period though about mm. the the library i miss the quiet sections of the library though 
Um, obviously, I'll go into like the louder sections of the communal areas for if we're doing a group project and we need to talk. But <laughs> since I've already discussed the fact that I like to um, sort of sit on my essays for a while and not get them in like <laughs> a bit too soon, that's a really diplomatic way of saying that I leave it until the last week, <laughs> just a bit. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but basically, um, I love kind of focusing in the quieter areas because it really forces you into that mind frame of okay this is your study time now and my main difficulty is actually having the motivation to get started and doing it because studying isn't difficult um once you begin it and once you're like in it um but I always think the concept of studying always holds me back from actually doing it but then I mean one of my essays that I'm writing it's on the history of memes and defining memes within That's culture really and how memes means. like shape <sighs> politics and social media and it's really really interesting but yeah basically i miss the library but then i even miss like just the funny parts about campus as well leaving your um, student accommodation like i would do in first year and then just seeing this random student get chased out of dine central by like a seagull that's trying to eat their sandwich <laughs> I love that. Or even just small things like in Falmouth Square when there'll be things going on that you won't even know about and you'll just be walking across campus and you'll just see that and be like, oh, this is fun. Or, yeah, I kind of... Casual protest in Library Square. (laughs) 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 I think, like, from listening to everyone saying about, like, what you miss about campus, it's just made me realise that, like, I miss, like, literally everything on the campus. And well, from what Josh and Perry say that like you've been missing library, I think apart from watching like a people studying that like the recorded clip of themselves studying, I think there must be some YouTube clip about library sound, something like that. I, I think it's like that existed. Yeah, I think that might also help like motivate. It is. Yeah, for me, yeah. I I'm weird and different in that sense that I prefer to study independently but in the group area but i blast like <laughs> like revision music i know this sounds so weird i blast like revision music i just prefer to like it makes me concentrate more because it's like i can't focus on everyone else i have to focus on what i'm doing whereas in the quiet area i get quite rest i can't sit in silence i get restless in silence. i'm the exact same yeah. literally exact same i like I sit on a massive table with loads of people i don't know in my own little area <laughs> all of like first term i like i just watched the downton abbey film with my mum in the summer so i was just listening to the downton abbey like like soundtrack all the first term whenever in the group study area and people would be like joking about like their like their nights out or like their boiler broke and how they're fixing it yeah, I love hearing that or thing. showering in the gym i was there like yeah with my classical music in my ears. Yeah, I don't know about that though. I've overheard some weird stories from people in Sussex Library. I think when you've heard what I've heard, you'll want to come to the silent study area with me. I'll be like, that's enough interaction maybe, for today. Maybe you overheard my weird story. Maybe you're sitting beside me, but you don't know me that time yet. <laughs> Who knows? Oh. Who knows? I'm just going to say some people are out here living some crazy lives. Yeah. You know who you are. You do you kind of thing. <laughs> and in terms yeah. of um, what we um, miss about Sussex as well, do we feel at all that our mental health has kind of been impacted by not being able to like still be at Sussex? I know mental health is a really topical subject and it can be one that's quite difficult to speak about. So maybe it might be the case for I, some people, it might not be for others. Yeah, I think for me, because I'm the one reason that I did love Sussex and Brighton was purely because of the seaside and like being able to just go down there like at uni when I would be having stressful weeks I would literally just go down there by myself or with my mates or my flatmates and just sit by the seafront and like watch the sunset go down and the fact that I live in London which is like traditionally known to be like such a busy city with commuting and stuff like that it's hard like I don't get that in London anymore so it's like trying to find my own sort of de-stress way of life somehow at home but I I'm, that's what I'm struggling to kind of like figure out because it's harder to de-stress whilst being in the same space because I'm so used to either going to the gym or like going to the seafront or just going out to go and see like other friends on campus whereas I can't do that anymore so it's just trying mm. to once again it's like trying to find that new norm yeah um, and yeah. I think because I don't stay at campus going to campus was so important because it would be when I saw the majority of people 
um obviously living at home I don't live with like 14 other people in this like student accommodation where I'm like oh let's all just go sit in the kitchen and chat it would literally be when I go to a campus that I see everyone so it's been really difficult in the sense that now I literally am stuck in my own four walls at the time but I think it, that's why it's so important to just stay in touch with people because that's where you can de-stress over a silly FaceTime or through like playing a game online I know Cards Against Humanity has an online version so like you and a bunch of people can all play Cards Against Humanity at the same time and have a chat box so I've been enjoying that yeah just staying in touch I think has been so vital for me to not feel like extremely lonely during these times because I think it's so easy to be if you don't make the effort and like message that friend I think that's really really important because I experienced that for me myself because after I come back home like I just never I kind of like lost the contact with my friends for like at least two weeks because everyone just kind of like trying to set everything up in a new lifestyle and in a normal time I usually walk to the lecture theater with my friends and spend like most of my days with my friends but now because everyone's been living in separate houses and I think everyone's been focusing on many things or many tasks or duties they have to done and sometimes I feel lonely but it's hard for me to start a chat with my friends because I don't know it's weird but I always think that oh my maybe my friends is busy with something else and maybe they don't want to talk to me but like I just feel lonely by myself that's it. I think that's a really big problem. So staying in touch with your friends, maybe find some like apps or games, just like Emma said, like to play with friends. And that's a really important thing. Yeah, I think a lot of people have like jumped on like the pub quiz hype of like doing loads of things or like just games or anything like that. And I feel like that has allowed a lot of people to still connect, even if it's just like the two hours a week. Even mm-hmm. us recording this podcast is literally us talking to other humans. Yeah. Yeah. So like yeah. It's, yeah. it's great. But as much as I love my family, I can't live with them constantly. <laughs> you did for the first 18 years of your life. Uh, no more. <laughs> literally. <laughs> so, yeah. Apart from that, we can debate about the productivity and how have you guys tried to stay productive during this time? How has it been for you as a student? Is it different in a per- perspective of quarantine in a different places? I think it's so interesting, like this whole idea of productivity is so different for everyone. And you really should define it for you and what you are capable of. And I think that does change day to day because I can wake up and have a really good day and I'll smash out five things on my to-do list. But I think it's really important that on my to-do list, I have small things like that, that aren't all uni work or student work. So what a thing on my to-do list would be like, clean out that drawer in your room that has wires and old headphones that don't work anymore. Like just clean that out and spend some time doing things you've put off. But I just think productivity, like don't put too much pressure on yourself and I think it's so hard sometimes to motivate yourself. So I literally am like setting myself three things to do a day max and then not getting angry at myself or feeling down that I've not finished them. I'm trying to change my mindset of like having a to-do list and being like, these have to be done instead of being like, I want these to be done today. But if not, it's not going to be the worst thing in the world because we are in a pandemic. It's completely different dynamics to how I would normally work. And therefore I'm allowed to not be the same as I was pre-quarantine yeah I think that's the same with me because I feel like it's kind of once again it's like that a-level mentality of like if I'm not working I feel guilty because I've had nothing to do at home apart from uni work because there isn't literally nothing else for me to do I've struggled to like balance that and trying to set myself out goals throughout the week has helped a bit but it's also I think what I found is trying to be like what you said Emma the flexibility of it and not trying to be so harsh on yourself because it just puts you down even more and especially because all of us are struggling with like trying to keep like or maintain our our mental health at a stable position we should be like more forgiving in that sense with what we have to do I feel like a lot of people tend to Mm. compare each other to like um, one another and everyone work like at our age like everyone works at a different speed rate and ability so you're trying to compare someone that's already completed their essays there's no difference uh, I feel like we should just all try and like work our own pace and 
just get yes i echo that 100 percent. i think balance is just the key word i'm just trying to strike Mm. the healthy and correct balance for absolutely everything in my life at the minute um and just make everything cohesive and try and create a day that i'm proud of whether it's really productive or whether it's a day filled with like fun little activities that can help me wind down if something particularly stressful is going on with myself and my family yeah there's a phrase in ireland that's like um comparison is the devil's act so (laughs) um honestly and on a personal note as well it was that act of comparison that i kind of found myself seeping into especially through social media since looking into everybody else's lives is like so accessible and you might not even necessarily be messaging certain people but it could even be seeing glimpses of their day or if you follow certain influencers and their sort of lifestyle and it seems like because everybody puts their best foot forward in terms of online and you want to be represented in the best possible light so you cherry pick specific moments in your day or you might structure your life whether it's consciously or subliminally in a way that would make you look more favorable to other people so I was finding myself and it wasn't necessarily anybody's fault but just the fact that I was like oh like I'm really not achieving much out of this quarantine and there's a lot of these articles Mm. that have guides and tips on how to be productive and how to be the best you and if you're just genuinely not feeling it it can just honestly feel like you're shouting at a brick wall so I just let myself have a bit of a break I logged out of Instagram for a while and I have to say like the digital detox even though I'm studying media it might sound ironic but I really enjoyed it and I feel like I've been able to come back at things with a fresh perspective I suppose because I would say that my life was borderline overwhelming before quarantine was sanctioned and put into place anyway so I felt like I took advantage of the break but now I'm just raring to go and I'm feeling a lot better after after the break so I would say do structure in breaks into your routine as well and be forgiving of yourself treat yourself to nice things just because you haven't (laughs) built the Taj Mahal or (laughs) Recreated a Picasso painting. <laughs> made a banana bread. Followed a Bob Ross. <laughs> That's what I've been doing yes. in my post. Like everyone's made a banana bread. Just because bread. you've not followed a Bob Ross tutorial <laughs> and painted it on your wall doesn't mean that you aren't worthy of taking a break and letting yourself I like, be. I think like another phrase is like slow and steady wins mm. the race. Like people just have to like ease into it, and especially especially at a time when we literally have all the time in our hands, it's we just have to kind of be patient. <laughs> And I know that um, everybody's lives are really yeah. different as well. I, Getting the feeling that a lot of us, at least in our positions right now, we're not having to necessarily like care for different families or different people or we're not most of the medical school students that have now actually like graduated early to go on and like work in the field as well. So massive props to anybody that's doing that. I really applaud yeah. and I'm so appreciative Crazy. of everybody working in our yeah. NHS. It's just fabulous that we have that and that there are students in our position that are also doing necessary work but even to people that are working in shops yes like you Emma yes Um, I just raised my hands it's nowhere near the nurses and stuff no but but it's all I mean we wouldn't be able to function we honestly wouldn't be able to function without people like that so I know that we're kind of coming from I would say maybe a more comfortable place and it might not be wholly representative of everybody Mm -hmm. But I think it's just mind, it's important Mm -hmm. to keep everybody's situations in mind too. And just be supportive of everyone because like as much as we're all at home, supposedly in our own comforts, everyone's situation Mm -hmm. might not be the same and they might not have a comfortable situation at home. So it's kind of just trying to be understanding and just checking in with who and everyone around us. Leading on top of like uh, the new things that everyone's, um, been doing have you guys like learned any new um skills or like things during quarantine or started anything new that you've like dabbled in i am um, you always used to like doodle in lectures or in classes when i was younger because i'm an english student i think i was so die hard english student that i just hated everything mathematical or scientific and um therefore like in, <laughs> sorry i did that like, <laughs> like chemistry characters in, <laughs> in my um like chemistry lessons and they all wore glasses and i love drawing them so much and i used to like get people to recommend me like a style to be like oh you and i've just been enjoying making 
loads of like repetitions but different characters and I think I might try and put them to like little stories I don't think I'm amazing at it but it's just been really fun to just sit on my desk and actually just do something creative because I've not done that in so long I used to write like mini stories when I was younger but I'm beyond the point now of trying to like recreate them but sitting down and drawing again has been really cool so I don't think it's necessarily new but it's going back to something that I used to do out of boredom but now it's actually becoming something I'm wanting to do more (laughs) I think my answer might be less productive than Emma's but as we've said productivity you define it yourself so I was really lucky to get my hands on a Nintendo Switch just as the UK was (laughs) going into quarantine so I got the best Animal Crossing Island life I've been developing (laughs) that. I think I've put something ridiculous like 100 hours into it, but I have had it for like over a month now, which isn't any better. (laughs) It's genuinely not. But um, I know that there are people out there that have literally put like 400 hours into it. And it's like, what? So that's being a kind of fun and quirky method of like communicating with people, but then also releasing my creativity. But aside from (laughs) sort of wallowing in my Animal Crossing world, I've really gotten into it, and this is a bit random, but I've been trying to teach myself through, I can't remember what it's called exactly, but there's online courses that you can take and resources that are available. I think it's called Skillshare. Am I right in saying that? Yeah, I think I've had a YouTube Mm -hmm. ad. (laughs) But yeah, basically, I got suckered in by a YouTube ad. (laughs) They know their target audience, apparently. And um, I've, like, started looking at, like, graphic design and animation courses like I'm really interested in like creating 2D animations or illustrations and like sketching it or just making things like that. I've never been necessarily artistic, but there's just something about trying to do that and being able to do it in my own pace where it's not being graded. And it's quite far from anything that I'm doing at university. It's helping me create that distinctive balance between the media work that I have to do and then the media work that I'm like learning myself and I'm having fun with cute that's really impressive <laughs> like it, it makes me don't really want to say what like it, it makes me don't really want to say what i've been doing because it's less no less oh my god honestly this is a this is a no, safe God. space no one's judging anyone i mean i've put a hundred hours into animal crossing <laughs> I didn't even know there was tarantulas on Animal Crossing until yesterday when my sister was showing me she caught a tarantula. And I was like, wait, what? Wait, what? (laughs) They're scary. Like, the first time I was playing the game, they're kind of scary. But then I was like, come on, Josh, cop on. You're literally scared of (laughs) a virtual tarantula. But yeah. I feel like everyone's been playing Animal Crossing. Like, every single story on my friend's, like, social media is like animal crossing animal crossing i feel like i'm left in like 2019 something like that (laughs) anyway like i didn't like kind of learn new things just more of like picking up Mm. the old hobbies that i used to like when i was in high school because especially during the easter break i got like zero thing to do so i found this kind of watercolor palette in my attic like it's from high school so it's I, I've been spending my free time kind of like painting watercolor. I know that like my skill is not that good with like my artistic skill is like zero, but I've been enjoying it. And I think like, even though you're not really good at it, but if you enjoy it, you should continue doing it. Another thing that I've been doing is practicing yoga, which I've never done it before. And my body is not really stretchy. Like I can't stretch that much. I don't know. Maybe it needs more. I mean, maybe practice. getting up from underneath <laughs> the table where you're sat I'm right just... now would be a good start. <laughs> <laughs> For context, Kai is sat no! the and it's almost midnight in Thailand, yes. so she's got some serious dedication. <laughs> <laughs> Bless her commitment, it's because of the audio, but we've kind of had to just make do. But yeah, going on the lines of Kai as well, I've I I used to do a lot of yoga before when I was younger, but kind of stopped. And because I've had all the time in my life, I've picked it up again. And it's just like, I've realised how unflexible I've become since I've become an adult. And (laughs) nothing, it's just not the same as I was a kid. But another thing that I have been, I guess it's not something I've learned. In some sense, it's how much like clutter I have because I've been (laughs) decluttering. And yeah, I've learned that I. I won't say I'm not That's what every hoarder says. 
<laughs> but there's like unnecessary things that I have that I just need to let go of from my childhood. I've just been like clearing my entire life out, which has been great. It's just like a nice detox. <laughs> that sounds but, nice yeah. though. I mean, it's the <laughs> sort of similar vibe with how I kind of treated my like first year student accommodation. I know not everybody will be the same. But I was way more clean and tidy Mm -hmm. with where I was living at university than where I was back home. (laughs) Because I feel like if I'm just constantly surrounded by mess and dirty dishes and like all of that, I just, I won't feel right in myself and I'll feel uncomfortable. That's me. I've just been trying to like get, I feel like if my environment is not clean and just tidy, my head isn't. And it's just like everything's always just confused and I just it's not a nice workspace to be working in that's so interesting because um, I literally yeah. always do my uni work with like an mm. unmade bed I have like clothes on the floor I do clean <laughs> it but I just I I can work in a messy space I don't know I feel like my mind's very messy I draw like crazy mind maps for my essays and that there's, there's no order it doesn't follow like a clockwise order on the page for my points it's like point two, point four, point three, quote 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 <laughs> So I feel like, I don't know, it's like it works with my chaotic mind to have all my stuff everywhere. Because I know where everything is, even though it's messy. I know I've got two pairs of socks behind my desk. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You make piles. I, I can sense you're a pile. <laughs> I completely agree with that. Like, when, when I was still in a uni accommodation, like, I have, I can manage everything that is my own. Like, I can manage the even the stuff in the kitchen, stuff in my room. When I'm back in my home with my parents, they always organize things in the home for me. Yeah. And sometimes it's bad. Like if I get used to those habits and if I get back to the accommodation, I might not be able to like settle everything by myself. <laughs> like the clean freak obsessive nature in me comes back home and is like just wants to rearrange and clean everything in the house. But then I have to come back to the fact that it's not my house, <laughs> it's my parents' home. So like <laughs> I just have to try and deal with it. But yeah. Moving on, do you guys feel like this time in quarantine has like taught you anything and what would you take into the future from I this think period I'm being of time? I guess? To myself. I, yeah, I know it sounds really cool. Um, I have like um, from like birthdays, Christmases. I have loads of face masks or like creams. I have loads of nail polishes, and I used to love just self care. But with uni, I just feel like I just completely forgot it. I came home sometimes, like if I had a late class, and then I had a commute home, and a couple of trains got delayed. I'd be home at like ten pm, and be like, ugh, I just want to go to bed. But now I've been like, no, you're going you're gonna to treat yourself to that face mask. It's probably out of date because it's been there for two years. But you're going to treat yourself to that face mask. <laughs> you're going to do that um, like, foot soak, even though it's, it's weird and you don't feel like you can because of like our bath is really small. But I've been, yeah, I think I've just been kinder to myself and just been like knowing that how I was before, perhaps I wasn't taking enough priority over my own space and my, also just myself. I feel like I was so focused on just getting each day done. But now that I've got more time, it's actually been nice to just try and be nice to me. Which, I don't know, is that selfish? No, I don't think so. (laughs) Basically, my one is the there's no point in worrying about things that you aren't in control of. So just live like the best life that you can in the present. And I know that might sound a bit cliche or (laughs) finger snapping. Um, But yeah, basically there's a lot of variables in life. And if you spend all of the time worrying about the things that might not happen or could not happen or have been delayed or have been postponed or that you can't do anymore, then you're not going to get anywhere. It's unfortunate with how the lockdown has sort of came at this time in my life because I was actually really proud of some of the opportunities that I was being presented with. Literally the week of I was going to start an internship and I'd just come out of like a past like work opportunity with the BBC and I'm so glad I got to do that before quarantine was like enforced but like different things like that and I felt like my life was going in a, like a really good direction and I was really happy with how things were going for a, a change. But there is like multiple things that I can't do anymore with obviously this being like a global pandemic. One of them was a phenomenal scheme that the university runs for first generation scholars. And that was the global internship program. So I'd just like gotten off the phone um, from like a final 
stage interview and the process had taken like a couple of months so the university would select particular students in order to go and have this four to eight week exchange to work within their sort of preferred sector so for me it would have been a media um, company but it would have been in like Beijing or Shanghai and it was like fully paid for uh, I think the British Council and Generation UK would have paid for it too I think I was going to be doing it with Lola who's also like a DMG as well so it would have been a fantastic yeah. experience but since that's not happening anymore obviously you go through a period of feeling really disappointed about it but there's honestly nothing that you can do about it and Sussex were so fantastic in the fact that they were trying to make sure that we were okay and keep us in contact and careers and employability centre and their internships team were really phenomenal so shout out to them for that experience but then also the fact that I'm on a like a degree program here at Sussex that has an integrated study year abroad that I'm meant to be starting in September. So obviously <laughs> that's a big worry for me as well. So I feel like the constant thread of worry in my life, like there's just no point in it. And I'm just trying to reach a place of Zen now. And I feel like I've said it enough times to my friends, oh, there's no point in worrying about things that you're not in control of. I need to start taking my own advice. And I have done over the past few weeks and I felt a lot better. So we're just rolling with the punches and I would will definitely be doing a lot more of that in the future. We love the self growth. <laughs> mm -hmm. I can really relate a little bit to Josh because I'm still mourning about the the opportunity that I've lost because of this pandemic. Because I was really excited about my internship, but it, apparently like, it, it's got cancelled. And listening to jo what Josh said is really comforts me. <laughs> nice, to <a> lot. <laughs> nice to know. Nice to know all of my <laughs> problems have helped someone. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that's no. the same with me. I had a media inter internship lined up for this summer and it's kind of just all up in the air. So I feel like realising that nothing, as students, I feel like we get into a mindset of like, we're at uni, we have to get as much experience as mm. we need, we need to like get everything done. But in the reality of things, yes. our health is way more important. And that is definitely like, that's something that's put on like Absolutely. the back seat for a lot of us. I feel like yeah. we have to like remember that our mental health should be prioritized opportunities will come and go like if it was meant to be it would have like been because the global pandemic came and like it's taken it away from us so there'll be another one like yeah I think mm -hmm. what I've learned is just yeah. to like accept things now that are happening rather than mm -hmm. be in denial about them because I, I definitely like remember from the start as a student I was like it's not gonna affect me like I'm a young student, like nothing's gonna like get, even if I get it, it, I probably won't affect me in terms of my immune system in comparison to everyone else. But that was such a naive thing to think and say, like it could affect everyone. I feel like the last thing that I want to do now is be naive about any other situation in the future. So trying to take things seriously and be more realistic about things. Where if you feel like you yeah. are really lucky in something and that you end up achieving this internship that you're really looking forward to yeah, and yeah, the no. chances of getting it were really slim or the timing was perfect for it and it's not happening now you might mm. start to like fall into this trap of despair where it's like oh well that was an absolute fluke yeah. I'm never going to be in that point in, or that position mm. where I'll be able to go for something like that again if it was really rare or whatever but I think if you are motivated mm -hmm. passionate and and willing to like carry on moving forward with life I think things will work out for you totally because at the end of the day it's not chance that people have received yeah. these opportunities in the first place I would like to mm -hmm. to believe that it's sort of internal qualities that you can will always have with you regardless yeah. of what's going on in the world that you'll be able to bring forward for other future opportunities yeah. anyway completely mm. the point is like to be grateful for what you have and do your best in everything yeah I think uh, on top of that it's kind of like it's not that all of our opportunities have just gone to waste like it's a global pandemic so companies that have off offered us these opportunities are having to like do the same and readjust so there m will probably be other opportunities for you guys to take or companies might give other suggestions or ways of you guys still being able to get certain qualifications or like experiences in other ways or offer you guys ones later in the future for you guys to get but yeah i think yeah. it's kind of just trying yeah. to be as optimistic as we possibly can we're all doing our best 
yeah you know life probably won't go back to um to how it was before (laughs) depending on your perspective you might not want it to because obviously there must have been some flaws in the system (laughs) for us to collapse as we have done but i believe that there are brighter Mm -hmm. days ahead and we can get through it we can i'm optimistic i'm genuinely it's like difficult times but i mean we're sussex students we can get over this yeah exactly yeah we just have to be patient and that's we just have to find, we've had, literally have to find that new norm again so whatever it is we can all mm. get through it and i think as students we've got each other thank you guys for listening to this week's podcast uh thank you to all of our digital media gurus to um helping me in this episode but yeah we'll uh see bye. you guys thanks for listening week. thank you Stay safe. bye, bye.